As soon as I splash down on a healthy coral reef, it's like a bustling little city. I'm immediately drawn to the activity, what's moving. Fish of various sizes and colors. You can focus in on one specific area and you'll just see it teeming with life. Snapping shrimp snapping and the parrotfish chirping and the damselfish whistling to each other. There's no other place in the natural world where you get bombarded with so many colors, shapes, textures. It's just, uh, it's just like a party going on there all the time. Coming down on an unhealthy reef is just such a different experience. Not only do you miss those colors, but you miss that three-dimensional structure. They are just like so bland compared to when you see a healthy reef. It looks like something died there and basically it's the ecosystem has died there. Reefs are incredibly complex and therefore they require a multidisciplinary team. So we have experts in chemistry, microbiology, acoustics and robotics that are helping us innovate the, the solutions that we need to help save these coral reefs. I'm a microbial ecologist, so I specialize in the smallest organisms in the ocean, the microbes. Our lab looks at the microbes from both uh, healthy, how are they helping, but also we're taking that critical view of them as uh, pathogens and trying to understand who's involved in some of those um, diseases. Basically what we do is we send a diver down with a set of syringes and they're hovering above the coral and, and taking a water sample. Those samples get processed on the boat and then that comes back to my lab here at the Woods Hole Oceanographic where we have all the equipment we need to be able to extract the DNA and sequence that DNA and understand what microbes are there, what kinds of genes they have. Do we actually see a unique signature coming off the, that coral? And does it change the health state of the coral? Mm -hmm. Maybe with that one too. I kind of think of myself as a sensory biologist. I like to get the, the animal's perspective of the world around it. And a lot of my background or my work is focused on listening, hearing, sound in the sea. Yeah, there you go. The first way we started thinking about this is just listening to the reefs in general and putting out these sort of sound recording microphones called hydrophones. And we set it to record for usually one minute every 10 minutes. And that allows us to get essentially the patterns of what's happening on our reef. We kind of set up these frames, essentially these anchors. They're just rebar stakes. We affix the listening structure to that rebar stake and then we can leave it there for a month at a time. What we're really listening for or assessing on reefs is the fish sound. So we think that's really, really important. You can begin to kind of then listen for changes in your reefs. And you can tell that disease is coming out or the warming is happening or there's a, a change essentially in the animal patterns and their calling rates on that reef. And when that disease hits, we can A, notice a very audible difference in those reefs, particularly that coral hub, that pillar of coral where it's a lot quieter out. And it kind of shows you that you're beginning to kind of lose that community center of the reef, and losing those is going to be really detrimental to the reef. We're finding that healthy reefs have a particular sound, and that can increase coral settlement on those reefs. So that begs the question, can we play sounds and, and bring larvae back to that reef? And that's where we're going now. And so that's, that's a really intriguing finding, that we can begin to kind of rebuild that reef. The expertise that I bring is that I study the chemistry of, of organismal health. So what, what are the chemicals that control the organism's immune system? And then how can we boost that immunity to help organisms survive? These are the same chemicals that our bodies use to fight off colds or when we get infected with a pathogen. And the same chemicals are being produced by corals. But they're really hard to measure because they live for about 30 seconds within the ocean. So what we need to be able to do is develop sensors to go in and measure it within the reef, which is what we've been working on for about the last five years. Our hope and goal is to make this autonomous. So what we want to do is miniaturize it, bring it down to the size of a button. And what we want to be able to do is make these deployable where we can stick them out right at the surfaces of various corals within a reef and then have that information sent to us via satellite in real time. 
as a roboticist and a computer scientist, a coral reef ecosystem. This is a very interesting space for a robot to work in and try to understand what's happening. And, and so what I hope to do is make our robots understand the coral reef ecosystems and then use that understanding to make decisions. three track lines and we can do a lot more after that. We have a bunch of robots and like different students leading each experiment. There's a student who's working on the following animals around. And there's another student working on how species are distributed. Another student is working on like how to teach robots what to pay attention to. The chance of you doing state-of-the-art stuff is much more when you have students on the project. Uh, the ultimate goal is to have a a team of autonomous robots, easily deployable, widely available, monitoring coral reefs and to be able to detect something going bad early so that we could do something about it. It's only recently that we have made this progress in machine learning and AI techniques that we have a chance to fully make a difference. Coral reefs are going to survive. They need people, they need science, and they need technology. They need people to understand the problems, they need scientists to develop the solutions, and they need technology to scale up the solutions to reach all reefs worldwide. What we want to be able to do is find early stage indicators of stress. Detect the signs of stress to a coral before we visually see them. Uh, the ultimate goal is to be able to diagnose a coral reef early on, early on enough that we could do some intervention to fix it. What we want to see is solutions that, that we can actually apply to the reef. So that is the ultimate success that we're looking for, is developing new solutions and making them scalable. Being able to communicate what we're doing and tell the story of the reefs is also going to be an important part of our success. It would be a big problem if we lost reefs without telling people the story that there's still time. That's also a really important part of what we're trying to do is just raise more awareness about the current situation with reefs and what people can do to help and how we are really working towards solutions.